Good afternoon, everyone. Bishop, we are on the rock. And not sinking sand. And that rock is? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Yeah. We are excited yeah. out there in television land. We have uh, Bishop back. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God is a good God all the time. It's so good to be here. As I told the lady yesterday, on the top of the dirt. Amen. <laughs> yes, Lord. I'm, I'm, I am Reverend Dr. Evelyn Underwood, and you, sir? I'm Dr. Bishop King James Underwood. And we have a wonderful guest that we will introduce him soon. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. At this time, we're going to get ready for the Word of God, and we're coming from the King James Version of the Bible. Yes. And uh, St. Matthew's, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 13. And it reads thusly. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter <laughs> answered and said, Thou art, art the Christ, Christ the, the Son, Son of, of the, the living, living God. God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thy, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, Peter, and upon yes. this rock, the revelation I, knowledge. Yes, Lord, I will build, build my, my church, church, and the gates of hell shall not, not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. Thus read the, the word of God. The church was built on Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. He's the foundation. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thus read the word of God. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we're going to ask our psalmist, mm -hmm. the Dr. Bishop, to give us a song of his choice. And before you do a Christmas song, please do the Our Father's Prayer. Okay. Thank you. Amen. Our Father, would Jordan heaven, yes. mm. how love would be thy name. Thy King come, yes. thy will Hallelujah. be done in earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our dead as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Oh, for thine yes. is the Hallelujah. kingdom, Hallelujah. and the power, and the yes. glory for Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Silent night. It was a silent night when Jesus was born. Mm. Everything was quiet mm. until the angels and the <laughs> heavenly host came. Silent night. Oh, holy night. All is calm. Tender and mild, sleeping in heavenly peace. 
sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight. Glory streams from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Lord. Silent night. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Our guest, Bishop, you want to introduce our guest? I think you're more eloquent. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> well, pastor to pastor, pastor to pastor. We have a wonderful pastor. Amen. Uh, it's an honor. Yes. As well as a pleasure. And a privilege. And a privilege. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To have him and to introduce the pastor, proud pastor. Praise God. Um, the first church of God in Champaign, uh, the pastor uh, Mark Dodson. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Hear ye him. Amen. Thank Dr. you. Dodson. Thank you for having me, uh, Reverend Dr. Underwood and Bishop Underwood. It yes, is sir. good to be in fellowship with you all again. Uh, yes. And the honor yes, and the privilege is all mine, and I thank you for asking me to come. Uh, I'd like to share an exhortation with you from Romans chapter 5, uh, and I believe it's appropriate for the season because many hearts get heavy during the holiday season because of losses we've suffered, because of things that we may not have accomplished, because of things that we're going through. And so I want to share from God's heart this word of encouragement, yes, and I'm yes. sure that it'll bless you. Yes, Lord. Beginning from Romans chapter 5, the first verse, I'm reading from the New King James Version. The word of our Lord reads, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Yes, yes. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, mm -hmm. knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, mm -hmm. and perseverance character, yes. and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, mm. because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, to our hearing, to our understanding, and to the application of the truths of the scripture. Amen. As I started in the beginning, Christmas is often a heavy time of the year for many people because of lost loved ones and other things. And God speaks right to us through the apostle Paul, and he speaks to the tribulation that we're going through. And he says to us that tribulation produces perseverance. Now, many of us would not choose to go through tribulation, but here's the reality. Life is hard for all of us equally. No one has an easy life and others have a hard life. We all have things to go through. They may be different and we may envy others when we see that they go through something that we esteem to be lighter or lesser than what we go through. But we all have our trials and tribulations. Yes, yes. And the reality is, is that God is always working in everything in our lives to bring us to a particular end. Yes. Now, that yes. may challenge some of us because most of us are allergic to pain. <laughs> <laughs> if we had our choice, yes. we wouldn't suffer anything. No, but no. the reality is, is that sometimes the experiences in our life are a training class for us. Mm. Yes, yes and it if is. If we yes, don't sir. pass the class, if we don't take the test and pass it, you've got to go through it again, mother. Yes, yes. Now in our day and age, we have what we call GED classes if you didn't go through high school. So yes. you can bypass the courses and take the test and pass, but you can't do that in life. No. 
If you don't go through, if you don't get the lesson, if you don't allow the experience to shape you, you'll have to continue to go through it in some form or fashion yes. until God's purposes are accomplished in your life. Amen. And so that's what we're talking about when we say tribulation produces per perseverance because God's way is always for us to go through the that's experience. Right. We would like to step out of it. See, when things get hot in the kitchen for us, we step <laughs> out of it and we abort the process and we don't know it. Yeah. And God is like, if you don't go through it now, you'll have to go through it later. Amen. One way or another, you're going through this because I've got something mm. for you mm. that you cannot receive until you come through it. Mm. Yes, yes. And so that tribulation produces in us patience and endurance yes, yes. because we will not go through an unpleasant experience unless we are patient, believing that God is with us and that he's bringing us to an expected end. And because we have that patience, we can endure mm, yes. whatever we're going through as long as we keep our eyes on the Lord. Lord yes, yes. Therefore, we've got to learn to be patient, patient. and endure yes. so that we can persevere. Yes, sir. And as far as patient goes, I'd like to share a story that uh, some may know. It's about Thomas Edison and his creation of the light bulb. Yes. And once he finally finished creating the light bulb, a reporter asked him, how did it feel to fail 1,000 times before you succeeded? Thomas Edison famously replied, I didn't fail 1,000 times. It was a process that had a thousand mm. steps in it. Mm. <laughs> and that's patience. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No matter what you go through, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how many times you've tried in the past and it hasn't worked, if you just continue on, mm. you'll reach the goal at the end. Yes, yes. Because patience is what's needed in order for us to persevere. There's also another story about Thomas Watson, the founder of IBM Company. Yeah. During the tribulation era, he had a young executive that he hired and he put him over a certain section of the business and the young man made a decision that cost the company $500,000. Mm. And so many who knew Thomas Watson and knew the young man were waiting for, as we say, the shoe to drop for this young man to lose his job. And days went by and the young man kept showing up at work. And so someone went to Mr. Watson and said, when are you going to fire him? And Thomas Watson said, why would I fire him and let the benefit of a $500,000 lesson that taught him to do it the right way benefit my competitor? Mm. Yes. So sometimes when we make a mistake, there's something good that can come out mm. of it if we just hold fast yes. and keep the, keep the pace yes, yes. and stay to the course. Mm. We wouldn't like to learn through experience and trials We'd like it just to be a download, like looking on Google and mm. just find the answer easily. But sometimes God wants to give us the experience mm. because when we have the experience, the lesson is learned well. Yes. Yes. And not yes. only that, we're changed by it. Yes. And that's what Paul is talking about when he says perseverance produces character. Ah. Yes. It's in that character building that God changes mm. us. Yes. Yeah. Here's something interesting that I found when I looked up the Greek word for character. It is harakteir. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the few words that when it's translated, it's exactly the same from the Greek to the English. And what it means in its root is that there is an engraving mm -hmm. or a cutting. And so this is what Paul is saying, that this perseverance producing this engraving or this cutting upon us. Now, by definition, we understand character to be moral and mental qualities that define a person. Mm. And so the moral qualities speak to our foundation, mm. who we are, what we believe in, mm -hmm. and what our convictions mm -hmm. are. But we cannot have character without the mental part. Mm. And the mental part speaks to our decision-making process. Mm. And this is where some of us miss the mark sometimes. Yes, it's not that we believe the wrong things. It's not that we're living wrong, but sometimes we respond incorrectly to the circumstances that we're faced with. Mm. Yes, it's our yes. decision. And what God wants us to learn out of this section is that we're not to be people who react. We're to be people who respond. Yes. 
Yeah. Because when we react, that means we've just been triggered. Mm. Yeah. And anybody can push our button mm -hmm. and trigger a reaction out of us. But the point of reaction is, is that when we react, we most assuredly miss the mark mm. and we don't give God the glory. Mm. And when we don't give him the God, when we don't give him the glory, mm. we also miss our experience mm. of him. Mm. And so God wants us to shift from being people who react to being people who respond. It's not just enough to have the moral foundation. You've got to have the mental fortitude mm. to respond rightly in every situation. See, some of us will go along with the crowd as long as everything's all right. Mm -hmm. But as soon as our button gets pushed, then we give somebody a right piece of our mind and we <laughs> let them have it. Yeah. Yeah. But in the end, we always feel bad about yeah, it because we know it didn't glorify God. Yes. yes. God wants us to learn to respond, respond. and not to react. Yes. And response takes thought. Yes. It takes preparation. Yes. It's like simmering mm. yes. your food in something so that the flavor gets into the mm. meat. Yes, yes, yes. And that's what God wants from us. Mm. He wants to change our character. Now, this character ought to remind us of mm. something that mm. we've seen and heard in the Old Testament. Mm. Doctor and bishop. Mm. Yes. And I hope you enjoy this because when time. God showed me this, I just had to rejoice. When we talk about character, it means that there's an engraving or a cutting. That ought to point us back to Moses being up on the mountain and receiving the Ten Commandments. Yes. Because God engraved the Ten Commandments on the tablets of stone. Mm. Yes, and the whole point of tribulation, producing perseverance that produces hopes, is yes. that God is writing his law, his word, Action. in our hearts. Mm. Yes, he is. So that we are mm. the living testament mm. of yes, his spirit yes. living inside of us. Mm. Yes, yes. Isn't that good? Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> so you've got to persevere mm. and allow the circumstance to work what God wills for it to work in your life mm. yes, so that yes. his testament is written on your heart. Mm. Yes, yes. And Paul continues, character produces character. hope. Mm. Yes, yes. And hope does not disappoint. Mm. Yes. Now, I got to do another word study here because Take oftentimes when we think of hope, the image we get is of perhaps a little kid wishing for something for his birthday or wishing for something for Christmas. And he's like, I hope that I get it. I hope that it works out my way. Yeah. And even some adults, they're wishing that things will work out. But that's not what's being talked about in the scripture. The word is el peace. Mm -hmm. And what Paul is talking about is an anticipation mm. with pleasure. Yes, mm. yes. So when he says that character produces hope, we're not wishing that things will work out we are absolutely certain that it'll work out. Mm, yes. Why is that? Because the love of God has been poured into our mm, hearts yes. by the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yes. And here's the thing about God's love. It reassures us mm. that he's with us, mm. yes. that he is working things out for our good. Mm. Yes. And yes. once we learn to embrace the love of God, yes. then we can learn to respond with love to him. Mm. And what is our love response to him? No matter what I go through, Lord, I'm trusting you. Mm. I'm holding your hand. I'm not turning around. I'm not going the other way. If you're with me, then I'm with you. Mm, yeah. And I'm going through to the other side of this storm. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Making it through. Yes, Praise sir. the Lord. Yes, sir. So when you're going through tribulation, for those of you who are children of the Most High mm. God, stop aborting the process yes, yes. and get determined to hold on to yes. God and go through. Yes. Because yes, your yes. experience, your growth, mm. your blessing mm. is on the other side of the tribulation. Yes, yes it is. Yes, and sir. for those of you who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then let me give you a proper way to interpret the circumstances of your life. You may feel like you're on a merry-go-round and you keep going in circles, the same experience. You can't seem to get a change and you can't seem to get off. Perhaps the Lord is calling you to himself yes. so that yes. he can bring you through. Yes. yes, yes. So I invite you because the hope is not just that character is produced in us. The hope is not just the word mm. being engraved on our hearts. Mm -hmm. The yes. hope 
from God's perspective mm -hmm. is that we resemble the Lord Jesus Christ in righteousness and in love yes. and in mercy. Yes. And so I invite you to yes. accept the Lord yes. so that you can receive of yes. his works in your life so that the tribulation in your life the circumstances you're going through can yeah. benefit mm. you. Yes, yes, sir. They're not just to be grueling. He's trying to grow you up. Ah. He's trying to yeah. mature you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And until you surrender and submit to him, you'll keep going through the same cycle yes. without any progression in yes, your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The hope that's being talked about by Paul is that we'll be like Jesus, yes. that we'll see the Lord face to face, and that we'll be transformed yes. to reveal his glory. Mm -hmm. Yes, his Praise glory. Praise the Lord, isn't Hallelujah. that good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Not our yes, glory, God. but his glory. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Mm, yes, sir. Yes. What a word. Yes. What a word. Yes. God is Amen. good. Yes. Yes, yes. Well, I yes, certainly God. would like you all to share some reflections or perhaps some personal experiences you had that echo these truths. Uh, I myself uh, understand this on the other side better. I went through years of addiction mm -hmm. and it wasn't until I got through it and looked back that God gave me an understanding of what was going on in my life. And yeah. that's like most of us, we don't see the ex or understand our experiences clearly until we're looking back yeah. at it in yeah. hindsight. But God is always working in our lives. Yes. yes. And he's faithful. Yes. And because his love is in my heart, mm. it doesn't matter what I face. Yes. I ah. can rejoice. Mm. Yes. And that's what Paul says. We mm. rejoice in our tribulations. Mm. Yes. Knowing yes. that they produce perseverance yes. and character and hope that doesn't disappoint us. Yes. 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 So I am yet rejoicing in God, and I'm mm. looking forward to everything that he's going to do in yes. my life. Yes, yes. And in the lives of those that he's mm. connected me with, the yes. membership of the First Church of God, my family, yes. and you good people as well. Yes. God Amen. bless you. Yes. Thank Amen. you so much for bringing me on. Oh, yes, yes, Romans 8.28. For we know that all things work together for good to mm. them that love God, who are the yes. called according to his purpose. Yes. It don't feel good all the time, but it's working together for good. That's <laughs> right. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm a living witness. witness. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, Lord. I, I can attest to it, too. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I love it. Amen. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. 5-1. Let me read that again. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that was 5-1. Oh, mm, mm, mm. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace. And you know, yes. there's so many people who don't have peace. That's right. But when you have God, you can have peace no matter what you're going through. That's right. You can have peace when you have God. Because that peace is not based on the external. It's based it's on, on what's in your heart. In your heart. God wants us to be able to endure the storms like Jesus when he was on the boat with the disciples yes. and he was below sleeping and they were fearing for their lives and he slept through it. God wants us to have that type of peace, peace. where we don't fret in the storm. That's right. Where we sit steady in steady. him and he carries us through. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And, and you know what? We can, you know, some of us who have God, sometimes we don't have that peace that we can have. That's right. If we trust in him. That's it. But we've got to trust, Bishop. Mm. Yes. How can we trust? You know, I was talking to a Christian even on yesterday. And somehow they haven't learned to trust in God. Yes, it's when you get that confidence, then you can have trust in God because you know and you know who he is. When you know who he is, then you don't worry about the other things because you know who he is. And, that, and what, what he is doesn't, doesn't deal with the other stuff because he can make those other things come into place. Amen. Because, Amen. They, you know, they've been through so much. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been so, through so much in their lives. You know, they just, they, they, they feel that they can't trust. Yeah, but, you know. but I found out that, uh, and I went through situations, and uh, I found out it's how you deal with the circumstances you're going through determine what, what you're going to have in an outcome of the situation because some people go through it and, and they come through with flying colors. Others get stuck. It, it depends on how you look at your circumstances. 
if you look at God and not the circumstances, before you know there it, you your go. circumstance is ended. They, that's it. Amen. That's what Amen. I was able to uh, discuss with him. I said, are you keeping your eyes on the prize? Yes. Are you keeping your eyes on Jesus? Mm -hmm. No matter what's going on around you, you've got to get up. Get up. Look up to Jesus. The heals from when coming to your help. Yes. You know, you don't have to look at the circumstances. Put your eyes on Jesus. Keep, put the word That's in it. your heart. Amen. If you put the word in your heart and believe what Jesus said that he will do mm. and trust in that, yeah. you don't have to worry about what's going on around you. Yes, well, uh, well, we take Peter, for instance, when he, when, he, when, he, when he said, bid me come. And he was looking at Jesus. He wasn't looking to see uh, anything. He got out and started walking on the water. Uh -huh. But when the waves slapped him, he looked down and looked at the situation. He took his eyes off of Jesus. He began to sink. And that's what we do in life. Because we take our eyes off him, then the situation overtakes us. And that's it. it. That's right. And that's the situation, you know, that uh, the individual was going through. And it looked like the people were so powerful, you know, and... And uh, she just felt that they were more powerful than God. I said, wait a minute. He made this world, you know, and everything that's in it. Amen. I don't care how powerful they look. You put your eyes on what the word says. And you look at the word and put it in your heart and walk as if you believe in the word. I mean, do you believe in it? Do you believe that what you have is going to take, she believes it's going to take her to heaven. I said, but then you don't believe it's going to work with you right here on the earth? You're not, you, you, you're not saved to only go to heaven. That's you're right. saved to live in on, on this earth and believe Jesus here. That's and, you right. know, when we got through talking, you know, some people feel that they are saved to go to heaven. But if you live here, Jesus can take care of you here. And I don't care how powerful the people seem as though they are. Jesus is still Jesus That's right. Yes. right here. He can take care of you right here on this earth, and he can take care of your situations right here. Yes. And if you can believe him to go to heaven and you can't believe him to take care of you here, there's something wrong with that picture. Yes. And so when we, and I, and I took us in some scriptures where God said this and God said that, and, and I let mm. her see. He can take care of you right here. You're doing what you're supposed You're paying your tithe. You're walking up right before him. He said he'll take care of you right here. They cannot overcome you. And I gave her some scriptures. It's, and your, I, yes. it's your faith and what you believe. What you believe, that's what you receive. You believe they are overcoming you, they overcome. You believe you have overcome, you have overcome. And we overcome by meditating on God's love. Yes. As Christians, we're not promised easy lives. We're not promised that we'll go through and we won't ever have any troubles anymore. Yeah. But is God's love enough for you? Because yes. when you can delight in God's love, then no matter what happens, your faith won't be shaken. And when your faith is solid, God will show you the other side of the storm. Yes. And you'll experience him like you had not experienced him until you went through that tribulation. I know, Amen. but see, they feel that the worldly people is going to overcome them. And they're not going to be, Jesus is not going to take care of them through the situation. Well, the Word and of God he says, He, he prepares will. a table for me in the presence, presence of, of my, my enemies. enemies. How can you sit down and eat if people want to fight you except the Lord protects you. you? And you know what I told him? And I said, look, you keep on. And you know the ones that's going against you right now, just go through and keep on loving them. And you have an opportunity to feel sorry for them when they're going through. Because this happened to me. Amen. And you know what? And, and when the, the things have come upon those, my enemies supposedly, and I've kept them to be my friends and kept loving them. That's it. When it come up on them, I said, and it's, oh, you know, so I said, oh, Lord, I feel sorry for them uh -huh. when they were going through. That's the love of God Amen. in your heart. You Amen. keep loving Amen. your enemies. Amen. You hear me? That's and you right. let them be your friends in Jesus' name. We're going to have the what God. a word. Love Thank word. you for coming. Praise Bishop, Lord. Yes. you enjoyed. Yes. God yes. bless you all. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Happy Jesus New Year is the reason for the season. Amen. Not all those gifts. Jesus is the gift. <laughs>
Keep him in your heart. The greatest gift. We love Amen. you. The, we love the, you. The gift that keep on giving. <laughs> Amen. 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 God bless you.